In New Orleans, the air is thick with history and the scent of something good. The city's rich cultural tapestry comes alive in its iconic dishes like gumbo, jambalaya, and beignets. Each a testament to resilience and community. These aren't just meals. They're culinary masterpieces that tell the story of survival and adaptation, with every bite revealing layers of tradition. Renowned chefs, along with waves of diverse immigrants, continually breathe new life into the city's cuisine, blending flavors and techniques to keep the food culture vibrant and ever-evolving. Walking through New Orleans' culinary landscape is like flipping through the pages of a history book, with each dish offering a sensory explosion of its storied past and dynamic presence. Every meal here celebrates the city's indomitable spirit. The food scene in New Orleans is more than a collection of recipes. It's a living, breathing testament to the city's enduring creativity and culinary richness. It's an invitation to taste the stories and traditions that make this place so uniquely captivating. New Orleans boasts a culinary scene as rich and complex as its history. This city is a melting pot of flavors, a fusion of French, Spanish, Cajun, and Caribbean influences mingled with Native and African American tradition. Every bite of gumbo, every powdered beignet, tells a story of resilience, adaptation, and the vibrant cultural tapestry that defines this place. The food here isn't just about substance. It's about community, culture, and creativity. Savoring the complex flavors of jambalaya, biting into a crispy poor boy, or indulging in the creamy richness of crawfish etouffee is like taking a journey through New Orleans' storied past. This city's food culture reflects a spirit of celebration and joy de vie, making it a must visit for any food enthusiast or adventurous traveler. America's love affair with New Orleans food has deep roots, from Thomas Jefferson's okra soup to Antoine's oyster Rockefeller and Central Grocery's famous mufalada. This city has long shaped American cuisine. Culinary legends like Leah Chase, Paul Prudhomme, and Emerald Lagasse have furthered its legacy, cementing New Orleans' place in the culinary world. New Orleans cuisine is constantly evolving, shaped by a diverse influx of immigrants. Sicilian migrants introduced stuffed artichokes and mufalettas. Vietnamese refugees brought pho and banh mi, and Central and South American migrants added pupusas and arapas. This blend of influences makes New Orleans food scene one of the most distinctive in the United States. Creole cuisine, a fusion of French, Spanish, West African, and Native American influences, features rich sauces and complex preparations. Cajun cuisine, with its French-Canadian roots, is hearty and rustic. Soul food, deeply rooted in West African traditions, offers flavorful dishes made with economical ingredients. Seafood from the Gulf of Mexico plays a starring role in iconic dishes like pull boys and mufalada sandwiches. New Orleans captivates generations with its rich tapestry of flavors, reflecting the city's resilience, creativity, and indomitable spirit. The city invites everyone to embark on a culinary journey through its enchanting streets, savoring bold and vibrant flavors crafted with love, heritage, and southern charm. Here, food is not just a meal, it's an experience, a celebration, a testament to the enduring spirit of New Orleans itself. Jambalaya, a culinary symphony reflecting the hot, vibrant spirit of New Orleans is a melting pot of flavors and cultures. The name likely derived from the French jabon for ham, ala with, and the African word ya for rice tells you it's all about ham and rice. Rooted in West African jollof rice, this dish is a testament to the city's French, African, and Spanish influences. It's the ultimate Louisiana staple, affordable, adaptable, and downright delicious. There are two main players in the jambalaya game, Creole or red jambalaya, which gets its hue from tomatoes, 
and Cajun with skips the tomatoes for a deeper, smokier flavor achieved by caramelizing the meat. The trinity of bell peppers, celery, and onions forms the backbone of this dish, which has been feeding the masses at church dinners and family reunions for generations. Jambalaya is more than food. It's a rich, flavorful slice of New Orleans history that continues to captivate palates far and wide. Conveniently located on St. Charles Avenue, just a stone throws away from the trolley line, Mr. Ed's Seafood and Oyster House beckons with its cozy, modern charm. Founded by Ed McIntyre, this spot is a getaway to the flavors of the Big Easy. From the moment you step in, the top-notch service and attentive staff make you feel like you've come home. The menu is a treasure trove, but the jambalaya is the real star. Whether you opt for it as a side or a main course, it's a dish that commands attention. The jambalaya here strikes the perfect balance of spice. Presented with three succulent shrimp perched atop mounds of flavorful rice, accompanied by a caramelized sausage link that sings with every bite. Tabascos and crystals on the table invite you to crank up the heat to your liking, adding that quintessential New Orleans kick. The plump, tender grilled shrimp elevate this dish from good to unforgettable. Generous portions ensure you leave not just satisfied, but thoroughly impressed. Ready to tackle whatever the Crescent City throws your way. Mr. Ed's Seafood and Oyster House isn't just a place to eat. It's an essential stop on any true culinary tour of New Orleans. The Poor Boy, a deceptively simple sandwich, weaves a narrative as rich as New Orleans itself. This culinary marvel began as the oyster loaf in the late 1800s, a masterpiece of fried oysters tucked into a French loaf, a beacon of local flavor. Fast forward to 1922, when Benny and Clovis Martin, former streetcar conductors, opened Martin Brothers Coffee Stand. The term poor boy emerged from the 1929 labor strike, a symbol of solidarity. The Martins fed striking workers, each sandwich destined for another poor boy. Even after Martin Brothers closed in 1972, John Genduza immortalized the poor boy by standardizing its size with a 35-inch loaf. Today, the poor boy isn't just a sandwich, it's a testament to New Orleans resilience, a beloved staple that echoes the city's indomitable spirit. Killer Poor Boys with two French Quarter locations, including the original pop-up in Aaron Rose Pub and a no-frill shop on Dauphine Street is where culinary wizard Cam Boudreaux and his wife April Bello work their magic. Here they craft internationally inspired New Orleans style sandwiches that redefine the genre. You step up to the counter, order your sandwich, grab a Coke, and find a seat. The star of the show, the ham and cheese poor boy. Instantly, the intoxicating aroma of the Chesse ham, hickory smoke to perfection, will envelop you. Then, you will notice the velvety porcelain cheese, transformed into a pimento, meld seamlessly with the grilled onions and bell peppers. Turning any skepticism you may have had about the combination of these flavors into pure delight. The poor boy is encased in crisp Dong Fong bread. This sandwich is a revelation. Killer Poor Boys isn't just a spot for a quick bite. It's a vibrant community hub where the ham and cheese poor boy rises to the occasion, surpassing all expectations and staking its claim as a French Quarter favorite. In New Orleans, gumbo is not just a dish, it's a declaration of the city's vibrant soul, a profound symbol of community and continuity. This isn't just food, it's history in a bowl, simmered with all the spices of diverse people and a past as vast and enduring as the Mississippi itself. Gumbo melds flavors and tells at a crossroads, each spoonful steeped in the essence of its people and its rich history. 
As you traverse the vibrant streets of New Orleans, the gumbo invites you to sit down and soak in the hot, simmering stories and the beating heart of the city. This isn't just about tasting local fare. It's an innovation to delve deep into the very soul of New Orleans. At the corner of Felicity and Terpsichore in Uptown New Orleans, there's Her Dat Kitchen, a no-frills joint where the magic happens under the watchful eye of Jeff Hurd. This guy is as New Orleans as it gets, with three decades of culinary chops to back it up. His gumbo? A revelation. Shrimp, chicken, sausage, and spices that whisper rather than shout, evoking distant places and familiar comforts. Served with potato salad and a grilled cheese sandwich, it's a meal that hits you just right in the soul. Jeff's education came from family and the best in the business, and it shows in the way he makes his roux, slow and deliberate, like a jazz riff. It's not just food, it's a ritual. Heard that kitchen isn't fancy, but it's the real deal. Open Monday through Saturday. The locals rave, their phone screens lit up with pictures of their plates, telling their friends, you gotta eat here. And Jeff and his crew take care of you. It's not just about filling your belly, it's about lifting your spirit. Heard that kitchen is where the food in the city meld into something unforgettable, a true slice of New Orleans. Beignets, these deep fried delights have transcended mere pastry to become a cultural phenomenon. In France, there are over 20 variations, but it's in New Orleans where beignets truly shine. Crafted from leavened dough and generously dusted with powdered sugar, they become more than just a breakfast treat. They're a testament to tradition. The name beignet itself comes from a Celtic word meaning to rise, and these golden morsels have a history dating back to the 16th century, intertwined with Mardi Gras festivities in France. Introduced to New Orleans by French colonists in the 1700s, beignets were officially crowned the Louisiana State Donut in 1986. The ultimate experience? Devouring them piping hot and crispy, straight out of the fryer. It's more than just a donut, it's a bite of history, a slice of cultural heritage, and an irresistible piece of New Orleans soul. At Stuffed Beignets and Burgers, it's not just about the food, it's about the soul of New Orleans on a plate. These aren't your run-of-the-mill beignets, no, these are stuffed masterpieces. Crawfish, shrimp, crab meat, Philly cheesesteak, or barbecue beef, each bite a revelation. For the sweet lovers, thank beignets filled with cheesecake, strawberry, or sweet potato. A nod to the city's penchant for indulgence. Dewana Lawrence, the mastermind behind Stuff, launched this culinary haven in 2016. It quickly found its footing in Gentilly, evolving into a family-run gym that now calls St. Claude Avenue in the Ninth Ward home. Here, every dish is made to order. The kitchen's intoxicating aromas pulling you into a vibrant culinary adventure. This is a place where three generations work in harmony, delivering friendly service with a weight that's well worth it. The crawfish filled beignets, golden and crunchy, are worth every minute of anticipation. Stuffed isn't just a restaurant, it's a journey through the heart of New Orleans, a testament of resilience, tradition, and darn good food. It's the kind of place that leaves you stuffed and grateful. The kind of place you'd consider for your last meal. Step into history with Morning Call, a classic beignet stand that's been part of New Orleans for over 150 years. Originally from the French market, this institution now calls Canal Boulevard in mid-city home. Since moving from its original spot in 1974, it has journeyed through Metri and City Park, finally landing its current location in 2020. Even after losing its lease to Café du Monde in 2019, Morning Call never missed a beat. Here in the shadows of the cemetery, this cash-only joint serves up piping hot beignets with an eclectic charm and live music on the weekends. The vibe is laid back, the clientele diverse, and the service personal. Forget the traditional routine, 
Waiters bring fresh, non-uniform beignets straight to your table. Want powdered sugar? Request it up front or grab a shaker from the assortment scattered around. Each beignet is a testament to their history. Fluffy and delightful, offering a unique, one-of-a-kind experience that leaves you craving more. Morning Call isn't just about good beignets. It's about a slice of New Orleans soul. Resilient and endlessly delicious. The story of the praline begins in the court of the great sun king, Louis XIV himself. Often credited to Marshal Duplessis Praline, but the real genius? His chef, Clement Lasagnier, who turned the simple combination of almonds and caramel into something extraordinary. Fast forward to 1727 New Orleans. Ursuline nuns, armed with old world recipes and new world ingredients, replaced almonds with local pecans, creating the iconic pecan praline. By the 19th century, entrepreneurial women of color were selling these sugary delights in the Vu Carre, turning pralines into symbols of economic independence and cultural heritage. Today, pralines are crafted with Louisiana cane sugar, cream, butter, and jumbo pecans, embodying the essence of New Orleans. Each bite of a praline is a testament to the city's spirit, a blend of history, diversity, and pure sweetness. Savor a pecan praline. Let the flavors transport you back in time and experience the timeless piece of Southern charm that's as rich and complex as the city itself. Ladies and gentlemen, step into the spotlight of New Orleans Sweet Legacy with Laura's Candies, the city's oldest candy shop founded in 1913. This historic confectionery invites you to experience a symphony of praline possibilities. From spirited rum notes, to the comforting embrace of maple, and the tropical allure of coconut. Beyond the renowned Creole praline, Laura's signature decadent Mississippi mud showcases an unwavering commitment to tradition and authenticity. In the heart of the French Quarter, daily magic unfolds as Laura crafts their Creole delicacies with recipes echoing back to the 19th century. This isn't just a candy shop, it's a century-long love affair with Southern confections, ensuring unparalleled quality and dedication to your satisfaction. New Orleans is a city where history and innovation dance together on every plate. Here, Food is more than just sustenance. It's a cultural symphony, a blend of flavors and traditions that tell tales of resilience and community. The city's iconic dishes aren't just food, they're edible stories. Each bite a nod to the Crescent City's rich, tumultuous past and its vibrant, ever-evolving present. The city's food scene is constantly being redefined by the hands of skilled chefs, and the influence of countless immigrants who bring their own flavors to the mix. It's this relentless reinvention that keeps New Orleans at the forefront of culinary excellence. Dive into a bowl of gumbo and you're tasting the layers of history. Bite into a beignet and you're indulging in a piece of cultural heritage. In New Orleans, dining is an experience. An invitation to explore the spirit and creativity that make this city so special. It's not just about filling your stomachs, it's about feeding your soul. The Hurricane Cocktail is not a drink of subtlety. Since its inception in the early 1940s at Pat O'Brien's Bar, it's been a high-octane staple in New Orleans. Born out of necessity and surplus, this potent mix of rum and fruit juices came about when rum was the easiest spirit to come by. Pat O'Brien's Drowning in the Stuff concocted the hurricane, a boozy sweet bomb made with two types of rum, lime juice, orange juice, passion fruit syrup, grenadine, and a couple of dashes of bitters. It's a cocktail designed for revelry, served in a tall, curvy glass that screams excess. Over time, they shifted to a pre-mixed version to handle the relentless demand. 
but the hurricane's essence remains untouched. It's a liquid symbol of New Orleans' unyielding party spirit, pulling in throngs of tourists and locals to the French Quarter, each seeking their own encounter with this iconic, riotous drink. This is what you will need to make a hurricane. Start off with two ounces of light rum, then two ounces of dark rum, one ounce lime juice, one ounce orange juice, three-fourths of an ounce passion fruit syrup, one teaspoon grenadine, two dashes of Angostura bitters. Add all the ingredients to an ice-filled shaker, then shake rigorously for 20 to 30 seconds. Garnish your hurricane with an orange wheel and a cherry. Enjoy, but enjoy responsibly. Remember, as always, the complete recipe will be on the Gulf Coastal Connections community page. I want to take this moment to personally thank you for watching this episode and every episode. It means the world to me. And if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscription button. You do not want to miss one second of the action on Gulf Coastal Connections. If you're planning on going to the beach at any time this summer, our last episode is the episode for you. I will leave a link for you in the descriptions. In our next episode, we're going back to Universal Orlando, and I'm going to be showing you how to beat the heat during your trips to the park. Surviving the Scorch at Universal Orlando airs next Tuesday, June the 1st. You will not want to miss this episode. And remember, as always, it is not goodbye. It's see you next Tuesday on Gulf Coastal Connections.